Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I am a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 68 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff we think you might like to know. And today we are running a Kareem and Matt only episode. We've been running probably three dozen episodes with other people, and um, we know you guys like it when it's just us. So Kareem's actually going to talk to us today, I believe, about implementing APIs using Flask, Python Flask. Is that right, bud? Yes. Yes, okay. yes, that's correct, Matt. And um, doing doing a, a nerd out episode with you is always fun. So um, one of the things that you know that got me to do this is we um, were prepping for the DevNet Expert exam, right? And as part of the okay. DevNet Expert exam, um, we have in the in the blueprint on how to manage and deploy your application with an API, right? And so it got me thinking. You know, this this is a perfect opportunity to showcase some of the things that I've done in the past with Flask and build on mm -hmm. that topic. And so today, I'm going to cover essentially uh, one of the one of two episodes that we're going to be talking about Flask and how to how to basically use it, how to build your application, mm -hmm. um, and then test it out, test out that API with Postman, and then. The next episode, I'm going to cover how to use Flask X to basically bring in uh, your documentation with Swagger for this this API, and then manage your application through that. So, uh, before yeah, before you get started, um, can you can you uh, give us a little bit of information about what what Flask is, uh, so that people have kind of a framework for understanding when you when you actually get into the code. Pretty much, you've done this too, Matt. But uh, Flask is essentially a web service uh, framework, or um, Python web service framework that allows you to basically um, wrap your code up and, and serve it. Right? It's super lightweight. It runs locally for testing and allows you to be deployed somewhere for you to run it. So you can actually run an entire site or run an entire uh, web app using Flask and and in production. So it's production ready uh, library that you can leverage. And you know all you got to do is essentially pip install Flask, import it, and um, you're ready to go. So um, okay, a cool. couple of things, right? Before okay. we before we dig into the code here, what we're doing is um, we're gonna we're gonna basically build up the kind of the the framework around Flask. What we're gonna do here, uh, we're also what we're doing is or what I'm planning on showing you is I'm gonna build a lightweight application. In this case, I'm building a poor man's uh, uh, IPAM, which allows you to like basically save your IP address as as a network administrator. You want to know your IP address. You know what's the address space? What's the VRF? Uh, what's the net mask, right? So something super simple. It's not going to be net box or anything <laughs> earth shattering like this. It's just <laughs> super simple. Um, but it's also going to leverage uh, tiny DB, which allows you to basically save that that data into a JSON file in, in a JSON format. So it makes it super simple. Right. This is just an example for you to practice how to get the concept and the idea of how to leverage Flask. Um, so it's, it, initially, what you got to do essentially is uh, import Flask. We instantiate a version, uh, uh, instantiate um, the application or Flask, um, and then instantiate an instance of TinyDB. And we're calling that DB. And this point is you've imported all the libraries that you need. Um, the, the way Flask works is you've defined, you got to define routes. You know, each route could have different methods, right? The route is essentially mm -hmm. your your URL, right? So like, let's say I'm running the server slash mat. That slash mat would be my route where the data is going to be either sent or that the request is going to be sent to. And on my side, as a developer, I have to somehow manage that, right? On, um, within and, code. and we can determine so, what... HTTP method is accepted. We can say uh, this particular route is going to only do gets, and when you do a get, this is the actual method that's being run. Uh, for, or you can do all all the HTTP methods for a particular route, and it'll adjust accordingly yep. based on whatever method you send across that. So there are different opportunities to do a little um, uh, object-oriented coding around this with Flask as well. 
that all depends on your um, your API design as well as your application architecture, right? How are you going to handle this? In my case, I wanted to keep it super super simple as well as I wanted to create different routes to show you how we like go through those the different pieces of this. So in this case, um, I have a, a default route. Right, which uh, all my traffic would go to, and this is just going to return a text message. Sorry, return a message on the screen that says, "Hey, welcome to the launch pad. Flask app is up and running." This gives you a notification that says, "Hey, I know that it's running on that um, on that specific IP that I've that I've defined." And in this case, after that, just like anything, I want to be able to do simple CRUD, right? Which is I want to be able to query my database, see what information about my IP addresses. Um, but I also want to allow filtering because, you know, if as my DB is kind of getting huge, I don't want to have to get all the data and siphon through it. So Flask allows you to basically read the, these arguments or these parameters that you can pass as part of your URL uh, as parameters. And then you can basically extrapolate or extract that out of your uh, your query, and then you can go essentially and search your database. And this is this is really what we're doing here, where I'm saying, for my slash query route, this only accepts method get. And um, once I see that that request successfully hitting my server, I'm going to go in and extract the IP address. So I'm expecting. Um, question mark IP equal the actual IP address. And based on that, I'm going to take that item um, and then loop through my database and query it essentially and look for if that IP address exists. And if that exists, I return the record and I make it pretty with J uh, JSONify. Uh, otherwise, I just return everything, right? And so it's super simple and I'm filtering IP. You can essentially expand on this if you want. You can accept, you know, VRF name, or you can do NetMask, or uh, whatever you, whatever your application required. In this case, we're keeping it super simple. The cool thing about sense? something, oh, yeah, totally. The cool thing about a lesson like this, especially something that starts off with kind of a building block, is that um, as we go through DevNet Snack Minutes as we have people come on and talk about APIs. We usually are talking about it as consumers of APIs. And we just take for granted the fact that there's an implementation behind the scenes for those API calls and that they're all implemented appropriately and that the data structures that are being managed behind the scenes are set up appropriately. But as we get into you know really understanding how APIs work, this is super helpful to kind of peek behind the curtain and say, oh, there's actual implementation here. There's decision points. There's ways that I could screw this up. There's ways that I can make it work better. Um, and that's a really cool thing to do with these projects is to understand that there is implementation happening behind the scenes. It's not all just magic uh, that's happening. So that's fun because then it ties all of these lessons that we talk about, status codes and methods and uh, return, uh, return JSON bodies and all that stuff. And you see how it's actually built that's super exciting yeah totally and and you know one thing that we got to keep in mind that um at this level because we're talking this is taking this out of the devnet expert uh, blueprints at this level mm -hmm. as a devnet expert you should actually have the understanding of how this whole thing works end to end and so this gives you kind of a if i'm building something like this for my organization as a senior engineer network engineer automation engineer what does it take and how, you know, what do I need to do to prove those skills? So we're, you know, we're testing those skills at a, at a deeper level. And this gives you kind of view into that. Um, okay. The, so we do this for, you know, I, I create query and then just like any CRUD, right? Like we have your, your create, um, which is in this case, I'm going to accept only post. Um, mm -hmm. And again, it's the same process. In this case, I'm saying I'm gonna. In this, in this case, just like how we've been teaching APIs, as part of the po post request, you gotta have a JSON body that you gotta, you know, put into as part of your um, your API call itself. In this case, from my receiving end, as somebody that's building this API, I gotta handle that JSON body, right? So mm -hmm. it comes as part of that request data. I know I'm gonna be receiving, um, and I probably should have. Got to remember, I, I you know to solidify this, I got to have proper error handling, you know, pro a way to to you know cleanly exit when things fail. So there's a lot of things that I haven't done here. So 
you know, at a, this is more of like just introductory of how to do this. Um, right. Definitely not production ready. So in this case, I've extrapolated <laughs> my request.data. I set it to record. And then in this case, I'm just using the, again, these are all uh, properties of the tiny DB where I can just simply insert. Uh, I could have used NoSQL, I could have used Mongo, whatever it is that, that you'd like to use. And so I'm going in and I'm inserting a new record. And then as, as, uh, confirmation to the, the end user, I'm saying, I'm just going to return all of the records back to show you what I have, as well as the newly inserted record. And I'm doing the exact cool. same thing for put, where, you know, if I hit this route slash update, I know I need to update a record, put would allow me to update. In this case, I have to, you know, logically, I, I re you got to tell me what, I, what record you want to update via um, the ID or via the IP address or whatever it is. And then you, you got to, post a JSON body with it to tell me what's what's the record that I'm updating. And essentially I'm doing this and I'm just looping through all of the, the records within TinyDB, finding that ID and then making the update and pushing it out. <clears throat> and okay. finally delete, which is removes the record based on ID. So Obviously. all of this is being handled, your simple CRUD, right? And I'm going and I'm saying, um, when, once this a Python application runs, I'm gonna run the server on this IP address, which is my local host on this port, right? So let's just do that real super quick. Okay. The application is started, right? So let's mm -hmm. go visit these routes. So if I go to the my default route as expected here, it's I'm getting this message. And this is super right. cool. Um, Flask, you don't have to like, let's say I updated this and I save it. This is gonna auto refresh for me. I don't actually have what? to rerun the, the Flask application in order for it. It's super awesome. That. I didn't know this. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, Interesting. But so he, here we have. So let's go test this out. And we're going to pull out Postman just to t test out our API. The next iteration of this, you're going to see as part of this page, you're going to see the Swagger UI, the actual um, uh, API documentation here. And then you can test out all of that. And uh, okay. Flask X allows you to do so. Um, so stay tuned and we'll definitely cover that together, but let's do, let's do our simple get. So flask get, I'm going to go in, hit slash query this right here, and then do a get. I'm going to filter on an IP address. And in this case, this IP address does not, is not, as, is not part of my DB. So I returned everything based on our logic on line 20 and 22 here. But if I take okay. this IP address, and I say, just show me this record. Update that. It returns oh, just cool. a simple record. All right. Right? Yeah, that makes and sense. I know uh -huh. we're running short on time here, Matt, but um, I'm mm -hmm. going to do just the post of a new, a new uh, record wrap to up. my database. And then let's wrap up. Okay. So again, slash create. I need to have a body part of this. Mm -hmm. I've inserted a new record into the database. My 105, it's right here as part of the status is used. So you can see how useful it is. If I go back to my get here, um, just not filter, I should see it now in my database. Uh, it's been updated. Right? There you go. So you can see cool. how easy it is. Um, any questions, Matt? Um, no, actually, I think you did a really good job laying it out and uh, setting up the experience so that we understand how Flask is being used, um, how the routes are set up, what the logic potentially looks like. Um, you know, I encourage uh, our snackers to go out and grab uh, Cream's code uh, from this URL, um, and you can check out this code for yourself. Um, but I'm excited for the next bit of it because you're going to tie in open API spec or or swagger into the implementation in flask, right? Right, exactly. And okay. we're going to see how we do that next. All right. Well, snackers, uh, stay tuned for that follow up episode um, uh, on this on this really I, I find it super interesting topic. I actually have a use case off the top of my head that I could use this for. Um, and so I, I look forward to that as well. So snackers, thank you so much for joining us. Kareem, thank you for uh, introducing us to this uh, topic. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on DevNet Snackman.